Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve a problem, kth largest sum in a binary tree. Conceptually, pretty simple problem. Suppose we're given a binary tree that looks like this. What we want to do is compute the level sum of each level in the tree. So that's relatively simple. Can you guess which algorithm we're gonna use to do that? I mean, we could use either DFS or BFS. Those are kind of the main algorithms that we use on trees. Technically, either will work to compute these, but I'm gonna prefer the BFS approach. It's kind of a more natural way to do this. So knowing that, what do we wanna do with those level sums? Assume we had them, we have five here, we have 17 here. 13 here, and we have 10 here. Well, among all of these, we want to find the kth largest element among these elements. So we pretty much removed the part that we needed a tree for. Now that we have these integers, we don't really need to worry about the tree anymore. Now it's just a matter of finding the kth largest element from this set of elements. The obvious way to do it is to sort this input so what's the time complexity of that going to be? Before you think that it's n, well, let's assume that n is actually the number of nodes in this tree. So then you might say, well, how many levels are going to be in the tree? Well, if it's a balanced tree, the height of the tree is going to be log n. So the size of this is going to be log n. But I'm not going to focus on that case. I'm going to consider the worst case where the height of the tree is actually equal to n. That would be the case where it's pretty much like a linked list, like something like this. So I'm going to, to be more precise, use h for the height of the tree. So let's say the length of this is going to be of length h, which in the worst case could be equal to n. The time complexity to sort that is going to be h log h. And of course, we're going to have to go through everything in the input. So the time complexity is going to be n, where n is the number of nodes, plus h log h. That's like the overall time complexity. And once we have like the sorted input, we just return, I think, the length of like this list minus a k, because we want the kth largest. So that's a perfectly valid way to solve this problem, but we can actually do a little bit better. Let me show you how. If we, instead of sorting, we take this and heapify it, we turn it into a heap, which if this is of size h, we can do that in big O of h. So far, the time complexity will be n from traversing the tree plus h from turning this into a heap. And then what kind of heap would we want to make it? If we want to return the kth largest element, let's turn it into a max heap. If we do that, we'll only have to pop from that heap up to k times. So we can say k times log h. So in the event that k is relatively small, this will be not too bad. Now, one thing I probably should have mentioned earlier is the fact that we might not actually have k levels in the tree. For example, in this tree, like this is level one, two, three, four. If we have k equals five, well, then we don't have a fifth level. And in that case, we return a default value of negative one. So that's pretty easy to handle, which is why I wasn't really too focused on that. So this max heap approach is valid, but there is one more approach we can take. It's a little bit clever. It involves using a min heap. And I'm going to leave this here. This is the max heap uh, time complexity. And we're going to compare it to the min heap solution. So the min heap solution is going to be kind of clever. The idea is that we're going to maintain a minimum heap of size k. It's always going to be less than or equal to k. And the reason we're making it a min heap is because every time we push an element, like as we're going through this level by level, we're going to push this to the heap. We're going to push this to the heap. And let's say K is two in this example. We're going to push that to the heap as well. And then since we want the heap to only be up to size two, we are going to remove the minimum element from the heap. So in other words, the min heap is always going to store the K largest numbers, the K largest levels. And so if we do it this way, once again, we're going to get to this level and we're going to see, okay, now our heap pop the minimum. This is the minimum. So this is what our heap is going to look like at the end. And then at the end, we want the kth largest element. If these are the K largest elements, we want the minimum among all of those elements. That's why we use the min heap. We can get the min element in constant time. So in this example, that will be 13. So what's the time complexity of this solution? Well, once again, we are going to traverse the tree. So it's going to be N plus the size of the heap is always going to be up to size K. 
So pushing and popping from the heap is gonna be of size K. We're gonna do that roughly H times, one for each level. So the overall time complexity of this approach is gonna be N plus H times log K. Now let's consider the case where the tree is not balanced, well then the H here would turn into an N. So this would be N log K. And over here, this would be K log N. So if the tree is not balanced, K could also be pretty big, like K could be approximately equal to N. So I guess like in the worst case, both of these uh, time complexities would be roughly similar. What about the case where the trees are balanced? Well, in that case, H would be approximately log N, in which case this time complexity would turn into log N times log K plus that N term. And then this time complexity would turn into K times log of log n and i guess like the upper bound of k itself is also equal to log n roughly if like it's a balanced tree so i mean at this point i guess we're just kind of confusing ourselves either way i think both of these solutions are pretty efficient i don't think in a real interview you would be asked to kind of explain why one is slightly more optimal than the other so i'll just leave things here but i thought like this kind of stuff was worth discussing thinking about the worst case and the best case runtimes. I will be coding up uh, the min-heap solution. I think this trick is worth knowing because it actually comes up in a lot of problems. If you're not familiar with this trick, I would uh, consider heading over to neatcode.io and going to the neatcode 150 list. And if you go to the heap section, this is actually literally the first problem in that section will teach you that trick. And I have a pretty decent video for that problem. Okay, so now let's get into it. The main thing about this problem, well, there's two aspects. It's the BFS, the breadth first search. I have plenty of videos on that, so I'm going to be kind of going through that relatively quickly. We use a queue. In my case, I'm gonna use a deck in Python. I'm gonna initialize it with the root because we're guaranteed that the root is gonna be non-null. We can safely do this. And I'm also gonna declare a min heap, which initially is gonna be an empty array. And I'm gonna say that this is gonna be at most size equal to K. And then while the queue is non-empty, we're gonna do the breadth first search. So for a particular level, we wanna compute the level sum, I'll initialize that to zero. Now we're gonna go through the current level. So I'm gonna take a snapshot of the length of the queue at this point in time, and that's how many times I'm going to iterate. So I'm gonna have a for loop for i in range this many times. So just going through the current level, the reason I'm doing this is because we're actually going to be adding to the queue as we go through the current level. So that's why it's important to take like a snapshot. And that's what this does in Python. So now I'm going to pop from the left side of the queue, pop left. We're gonna get a node from that. And I want to take that value of the node and add it to the level sum, just like this. And then I wanna consider the two children of this node. If they exist, I wanna add them to the queue. It probably doesn't matter which order we add them in, but I'm still gonna do it left to right. So if node.left is non-null, I'm gonna say queue.append, node.left. Same thing with the right side, and queue.append, node.right. Now that we've computed the level sum, let's go ahead and push it to the min heap, heap queue, heap push to the min heap, this value, the level sum. It's possible that the size of the heap became greater than K at this point, or maybe it's possible that it didn't. Either way, let's go ahead and check if the length of the min heap is greater than K. Well, in that case, let's pop from it. Heap Q, heap pop from the min heap. We're almost done with this. At this point, you might think once we're done with all of this, what we can return is the minimum value in the min heap at the end of this. And in that case, what we would do is return this min heap at index zero. That's almost correct. But remember, if there aren't K levels in the tree, what we actually wanna do is return negative one. So how do we know if there are K levels? Well, the size of the min heap, if it's less than K, then we return negative one because that means we never even added k values to the min heap in the first place. So I'm gonna handle that with a ternary operator, return negative one if length of min heap is less than k, else return the kth smallest integer. That's the entire code, let's give it a run. You can see it works and it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, definitely check out neatcode.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.